Yeah, he's six nine. Uh, he's oh, come on! Now I played point guard until grade ten. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I, I thought he was like a quarterback, so so that that would make sense if he was. Come on, because if you oh, said that he was going to be right, short, bro. come on, man. Oh, you're right. Oh, you're right. I played. Oh, he can be a six nine point guard. No, don't give him ideas. Next year, tell me next year, coach, can I be point guard? No. Holly, you're right. I played point guard until grade ten until I grew, and then they're like, "Okay, get in the post." Good afternoon, ballers and ballettes. I'm your host, Coach Ollie, and welcome back to another episode of Been a Minute, Season 2. Uh, unfortunately, my co-host, Coach Anand, had something come up again and couldn't make it. Nevertheless, this episode is still awesome, and uh, we have two very, very special guests today with us. Uh, this episode is our very first time having two guests, and uh, we hope you enjoy. Coach Paul, or Producer P, sorry, are you there? Hey, what's going on, everybody? And um, let's introduce them. Absolutely. So welcome, everybody. Uh, our first guest was born in Windsor, Ontario, and played at Riverside. We played for the Riverside Falcons basketball club for 11 years. Uh, he attended St. Joseph's High School, where his first team, All City, before leaving to go play prep at Southwest Academy. He was an OSBA All-Academic and uh, Southwest uh, Award winner in excellence in the community classroom and on the courts. He played for the uh, U-17 team, Team Ontario, where they uh, medaled, they were the gold medalists. Um, he was also on the U-17 Basketball Without Borders team uh, representing, for, representing Canada. He attends currently the University of Windsor, where he was the freshman athlete of the year, a super sophomore, he's a two-time team captain. Uh, an OUA All-Star, a two-time academic All-Canadian, uh, and he also represents Canada, or represented Canada uh, for Team Canada there at uh, under the Under-19 2019 FIBA World Cup. He's also a two-time U-Sport draft selection, uh, uh, selectee, I should say, uh, for the CBL's Hamilton Honey Badgers. Uh, the second guest that uh, we have with us today, uh, he hails from Kitchener, Ontario, uh, he attended St. Mary's High School, where he was a five-time District 8 champion, a four-time Kwasa, which is the district, uh, with our districts there, Kwasa champion, uh, and appeared in uh, OFSA, which is the provincial championships, uh, four times, winning two of those district MVPs. Uh, upon graduating high school, this fine gentleman took his talents down to the States, where he attended the uh, University of Missouri s and uh, where he played for two seasons before returning home to the University of Windsor. He's also a two-time captain for the men's basketball team. He's entering his final year of eligibility and finishing up Teachers College. Uh, he's also also an academic all-Canadian like our first guest. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, please welcome to the show uh, Thomas Kennedy and Taloy Simon. Gentlemen, are you, are you both there? Yes, sir. Happy to be on. Thanks for having us. Yes, sir. We're here, Coach. No, thanks for having us. You are, you know, thank you for taking the time to, you know, meet with us and, you know, just talk hoops and talk about your experience. And uh, the, the topic for this episode is the prototypical youth sports athlete from a player's perspective. And I know, uh, Thomas, you had emailed us and said, oh, because there's something definitely prototypical. And it's kind of a play on, it's a little bit of a play on words. And we'll yeah. get into that play on words later on in the show. So without any further ado, I know that Coach Ali's been chomping at the bit and he's been excited to have you guys on the show. So I'll let him, uh, I'll let him take it away from here. Coach Ali. Hey guys, how are you? Doing well, Coach. Doing well. That's, yeah. that's, that's yeah. good. That's good. Uh, so we're just going to get on with the rapid fire questions. Uh, Thomas, I'll start with you and uh, I'll ask Toilet right after. So Thomas, uh, you said you... In the bio, you said you grew up from Windsor, Ontario, right? Yes, sir. Born and raised. Nice. And um, you went. where did you go to school and what did you take there? So I'm at University of Windsor right now. I'm a, a business finance major. And uh, prior to that, I attended, as Coach mentioned, 
I went to St. Joe's in Windsor. It was my local high school. And then for my grade 12 year, I headed up to play in the OSBA with uh, Southwest Academy in London. Coach's okay. old stomping grounds. Coach Paul's <laughs> producer P's. Producer <laughs> P's. Uh, and Toloy, where did you go to school? And or you go to school at Windsor, you Windsor, but what did you take? Yeah, so um, I had graduated with my history, my honors in history. Um, I took history, obviously. Um, teachers College currently, I am going to be. I'm in the IS program, so I'm hoping to teach the high school level. And prior, as Coach P already alluded to in the bio, I am from Kitchener, Ontario. Um, went to St. Mary's, um, and I also played uh, Waterloo Wolverines, at a rep team, but um, a lot of my basketball recruitment and all that stuff happened at um, St. Mary's. Okay, that's dope. Um, have you guys coached basketball? Can you do your thing? <laughs> I, for me, I, I do a lot of training. I haven't coached a team or anything, but um, I do train. Uh, I do basketball training um, in the community, both in Windsor as well as Kitchener. Okay. Yeah, he's, he's, he's not alluding to the, to the real process that he's been doing in, uh, in not just Windsor, but also in his hometown. So I'll do it for him. But he's a much bigger trainer than I am. I, what he just said is what I do. He does much more than that. And he should be telling you about it. So, Pete, tell, tell us about it. Tom, All right. It. So, um, Tom, man. <laughs> but um, yeah, so during the pandemic 2020, December, my cousin, myself, had decided to you know to just do what we've already been doing within our communities and take it to another level by um, partnering with together, getting together, and um, creating Why Not You Basketball. Um, the name says it itself, you know, why not you? We just want to, you know, obviously train, but also, you know, um, you know, give hope to our communities and tell them, you know, you know, it could be, you know, like both ourselves come from backgrounds where we didn't have much. So we wanted to, um, you know, make a lot of the kids, not just in our community, but around that just, you know, you yourself can also um, be the one that goes on to college or university. Um, excel academically as well in sports nice. yeah, I, repl yeah. I replicate that on a bit of a smaller scale um uh, coach mentioned i paid for riverside falcons growing up for about 11 years so that was a community that you know inspired me and gave me a lot so i've had the pleasure of probably since uh, since i started university be able to give back to that community at riverside falcons and uh both our development programs with the uh, house league on monday nights and then i also run uh Tuesday small ball where I'm coaching kids uh, younger than grade three on an eight foot night. So I enjoy that. Nice. Yeah. That's just giving back to the community. That's what, that's what I'm doing right now too. I, I used to play for form uh, two years ago and now I'm just on the coaching staff helping out. Um, so tell us a little bit about your journey, basketball journey. Uh, Thomas, you, you can go first. Uh, so as I mean, I keep on mentioning, I will throw, I'll always say I'm a Riverside Falcon. Uh, it's a local rep ball. I played with them since grade two, even though you're supposed to start the first team in grade three. Played with them every year, right until grade 12. Uh, always been a basketball family. I'm happy to follow my dad's footsteps as he attended the University of Windsor and also War 54, which I get the pleasure of wearing now in the past couple of years. Um, throughout my high school time, I had the opportunity to, rep to represent the province with Team Ontario at the U17 level, after which I headed up to Southwest Academy and played in the OSBA with a very talented squad there. And then moved into university, decided to forego that uh, fifth year, stayed home, stayed in Windsor. Um, had a very good year with uh, Coach Chris Oliver, who was one of a major, major contributor on why I wanted to stay in Canada. Um, and he prepared me to, uh, in that summer, make uh, the U19 Team Canada, where I had the opportunity to represent our country at the U19 FIBA World Cup in Greece. And I returned home to play for my Team Canada assistant coach, Chris Chang. And he brought my talents even to another level where I was able to make uh, OUA third team uh, all-star in my most recent year plan. Um, and all throughout, I've had the pleasure of developing my leader skills as a basketball player, which... I don't take for granted. I probably value the most. 
And uh, so you mentioned earlier about your CBL uh, team, I think Hamil Hamilton? Yeah, so in, uh, in the CBL's 2019 inaugural season, uh, I was lucky enough to be in a good situation where I was drafted by the Hamilton Honey Badgers, yeah. by uh, the former GM and coach Chantel Valet, who's uh, the women's coach at the University of Windsor. Um, I was there as a youth sport development player. Um, and then it was a combination of that and I was Team Canada in 2019. And then this year, I got drafted again to play in this upcoming 2021 season. Uh, going nice. to camp next week, actually. Well, don't know when this is released, but going yeah. to training camp June 17th. That's crazy. That's that's really cool. Uh, what about Toloit? Toloit, what's your tell us a little bit about your journey? Yeah, so um, my journey as a basketball player started in grade nine at St. Mary's High School. Throughout, I've always been a soccer player, played really high level soccer, even grade nine. Um, had a couple of provincial. Um, opportunity I could have did but then I hit my growth spurt that summer and I just started winding down in basketball um played grade nine at St. Mary's um grade 10 is when I actually took my leap um, um after that you know I started working my butt off uh became one of the best players in the city um took my team we were powerhouse a bunch of the guys that I grew up with, we all just went to the same school, powerhouse, went to, won a lot of our district titles, um, our region titles, and went, as Coach P already alluded to, um, we went on to a lot of offsets, but never went over the, never got over the hump. Um, grade 12 is when I actually um, started to get a lot of the attention. Um, MPA started ranking guys. I uh, was pretty ranked pretty high up there. Um, a lot of division officer, a lot of division ones were there. Yeah, uh, did really well. Um, got my first division one offer to University of Missouri or University of uh, Mass, Mass UMass Lowell, University of Massachusetts Lowell. Um, went over there, took my own official. I actually committed when I got there. I was excited. Um, so I. I then later on my fifth year just right in the SAT, um, Missouri SNT also offered me. Um, I had a, a my AU teammate uh, was also already there. Um, I, I thought it was going to be a, I thought it to be the, the best fit for me at the time. So then I um, then yeah I committed there. I did two years, played really well. Um, then Chris Oliver, who was also recruiting me since like grade eleven. I took like six visits to Windsor um, during the time. Um, yeah, we just kept on contact. And then I w was going to come home, um, came out here. Um, then, yeah, I just decided to come back here 2017, um, as well as because academics. Uh, Teachers College was now a two-year program now. Uh, mm -hmm. I didn't want to spend any more time in school after I graduate. I wanted to make sure I have everything. And then, um, yeah see what happens after that so yeah that's that's kind of my a little bit of my journey that's dope yeah uh you guys sound like you guys have amazing track records with basketball but do you guys play any other sports uh throughout my childhood i mean t said you played soccer i played my second yeah. sport was always uh football, football. Uh, quarterback because following my uh my cousin's footsteps he taught me how to play a little bit he's uh He's a historic quarterback at the University of Windsor. Um, and oh, now, what was, sorry, what was his name? Austin Kennedy. There you go. Austin Kennedy. He, uh, he's a very well-known name in the Windsor community. Um, he has next to every record at University of Windsor and still holds some OUA records. Oh, my. Um, yeah, that's crazy. Um, and then uh, I would say my, my second sport now is golf. I, uh, golf? I, I play as much as I can. I play all the time. He's a very yeah. good golfer. I, not so much. <laughs> uh Toloy, besides soccer anything else i uh, know but aside um adding on to tom like i think he could actually start for the football team with the arm that he has like <laughs> i see him throwing the ball a couple of times i'm like yeah like the football actually like we we're horsing around a couple of times during our, our actually uh, in, uh, in grade 10 <laughs> you see my parents sat me down so i played i played junior football in grade 9 and 10 for st joe's my parents sat me down and we were at the point, they're like, okay, hey, you got to make a decision. Like what sport are you going to play? Mm -hmm. um, and like, I had always loved basketball. I always knew it would be basketball, but they're basically, if you're going to play basketball, you can't play football because 
football season's right before basketball season. So if I take a wrong hit, basketball season's done, right? So yeah. I said, grade 11, you have to pick which one you're going to do. So obviously it's basketball. And my football coaches were so mad at me. Like <laughs> one of them, like my junior coach, didn't talk to me for grade 11, grade 12. <laughs> yeah. like his, our relationship was just over because he didn't, he didn't realize um, the level I was at in basketball and he just thought yeah. I was a good football player. So, Do you, do you play point guard uh, in basketball? What's up? Do you play the point guard position on the team? Him. He's 6'9". Uh, oh, come on. Now I played point guard until grade 10. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I, I thought he was like a quarterback. So, so that, mm. that wouldn't make sense if he was come a quarterback. Come on, because you oh, said that Ollie, he was going to be short? Right, come on, man. Ollie, you're right. Ollie, you're right. I played no, point he can be a 6'9 point guard. No, don't give him ideas. Next year, tell me next year, coach, can I be point guard? No. <laughs> Ollie, you're right. I played point guard until grade 10 until I grew. And then they're like, okay, get in the post. <laughs> hey, from his defenses, he actually makes a lot of our decisions, though. So I gotta give. Yeah, him. I'm kidding. He's our point four, so then we have to build the ball. Come Four, on, geez. <laughs> but uh, right, guys, that, oops, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, but um, yeah, I didn't even know that about you, Tom. But um, for me, I again, I ever since I dropped soccer, um, I didn't really pick anything else. Um, I still think I can still play soccer. Um, but well, it's actually uh, not good. Wait, how tall is Toloy? I'm six three and a half. I actually measure without shoes. I'm six three and a half. I measure and a half. Really? You want to put that half in there? Just talk about <laughs> you. So you're I had my friend measure two weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. Toloy's uh, second sport is actually bird watching. He's an avid bird watcher. That guy. He loves the winds of nature. Oh, yeah. that's something. Really? That's something. See, that's not a lot doing? of people know. Watching <laughs> watching birds. I don't listen. Outside, man, it's beautiful, man. Like again, like not a lot of people know know that about me, but I actually enjoy like just everything. Me and my girlfriend goes out on walk, and she's always like, "What are you looking at?" I just try to like find anything, like anything beautiful to see. Like you know, I'm one of those. Um, I'm just a curious George, I guess. Nature, nature lover. You'd love Vancouver. A lot of hiking and a lot of yeah. outdoor stuff out here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. TK, like seriously, does he like do bird calls too and stuff like that? Man, do you have the binoculars and the, and the hey, like it might be time, funny, like, but yeah, I went, we went out yesterday. I went on my because, um, me and my cousin, we went, I was home just recently and we went to Waterloo Park and there's like a bunch of like animals out there. So my cousin had it was a peacock, so my cousin went on YouTube and put on peacock noises and then we actually <laughs> made the peacock go crazy. And then yesterday, I was out here in Windsor. And uh, the geese out there, I'm 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 on YouTube trying to find a geese noise to like see a reaction. So uh, no, don't do it. They'll attack you. Really? Yeah, <laughs> yeah they'll attack you. You're and crazy. You can't, it's le- it's illegal for you to hurt or kill a, a goose and go to jail. So don't. No, do no, kill it. But I just wanted to see what it does. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Um, moving on to the next question. What's your favorite food and why? Uh, Tula, we'll start with you first. Um, I kind of like. I like eating anything, man. I don't like. I'm yeah, one of those guys. I'll try. Like, but recently, like, my my girlfriend got me into seafood. Like, like. Oh um, yeah. Like yeah, like um, sushi. Um, we had salmon. Um, yeah. So seafood has been something I really uh, had enjoy in the last recent couple yeah. couple months. Yeah. You love you love like seafood from BC. This is this is basically what we're all known for because we're on the really That's west okay. coast and there's mm-hmm. fish everywhere basically mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. uh thomas what about you yeah, i'll give uh, i got like t said i mean the size i am i eat anything i can get my hands on but yeah. uh, <laughs> but uh, if, if i'm going out with my girl it's always uh, all you can eat sushi and i emphasize the all you can eat because i can't be paying for two rolls that's not enough <laughs> um but if i'm at home my mom's, my grandpa was a butcher, so my mom's a, a butcher's daughter, so steak is a, a big time meal at home for me. So yeah. That's nice. When, That's... when we say these guys can eat, trust me, I do their food orders at the university, and these guys can eat. I got to stand there and ration up your food first, for like, at least for the ser- first serving, because if not, these guys would eat it all in just one serving. Producer producer P definitely stepped it up. I'm not going to lie. And <laughs> first year, in my first year, after every game, it was pizza. Every single game it was pizza after every what game. What was it? What was it after once uh producer yeah. P was there? It was always something local. Like we got some Chinese food sometimes. It was never like sometimes it was pizza, you know. That's just yeah. easy depending on where you are. 
But like, I think uh, like the one big one was like Chinese because we never did that before. Mm-hmm. But man, yeah. you have pizza after every single game and you're playing 24 games. It's a lot it's of pretty pizza. unique though. I've never heard of like Chinese food right after. Oh, like, whatever. Uh, I, hope, I hope them up. Come on now. Yeah, Come on now. Took care of us. So hey, you got to produce the people looking after you. Actually, I, I did tell him at the beginning of the year I can't have pizza 22 times, but <laughs> <laughs> he listened though. He definitely listened. Yeah, I got you. I got you. That's good. We need seasoning uh, my pasta, man. Yeah. The pasta? Pasta needs seasoning, man. I can't do that pasta. <laughs> I'm used to my girlfriend's like seasoned pasta, you know, something good at home, and then I'm on the road. I'm I'm eating that pasta, man. That Kulini's the Kulini's pasta, the pregame meal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, oh, but no. come on, the, the, the we got we got your eyes with the meat sauce. The meat sauce was legit. Come on. Yeah, come but he's on. not getting that. He's getting the Alfredo. Yeah, I know. That's yeah. what yeah, it's true. It's true. <laughs> well, uh Haloy, you mentioned earlier that well, Thomas mentioned that, but Haloy, you like bird watching. Is that something that people know about you, or is that something not many people know about you? Not technically bird watching because I don't go out there to just look for birds. <laughs> <laughs> like I go out there just I just enjoy the nature, man. Like I nature like, observer. Yeah, like I just like to go out there and um not a lot of people know that about me because you know I don't talk about it as much. But as a recent as I get a little bit of as I got a little bit older now, I'm just you know, I just I just like going for walks and and, and seeing, you know, the outdoor. Sure. Yeah. So what would you say one thing that like not too many people know about you. It doesn't have to be too personal though. Yeah, yeah. I think I think that's that's probably it. Cause a lot of that's my probably friends, it. If that's that's it. Cause I think a lot of my friends if, if they hear that, they'll be like, what the hell to love? You you like to go out for walks? Cause when I go home, yeah. like they don't see that side of me because we always mm-hmm. are on the basketball court, like literally every time I'm playing 2K. So they don't really know, you know, anything of that. So yeah, that's for that's, sure. That's, yeah. For sure. Yeah. Uh Thomas, what about you? Is there anything that not too many people know about you? One thing? Oh um I want to say I'm more more of an open book, but like I mean if you're not like one of my friends or you know like one of my teammates then uh like you don't know I golf. Like most people don't know I do that. Yeah. Like, yeah. And I mean most people assume I don't because you don't usually see Six nine, six six nine, right, forward. swinging the sticks, you know. <laughs> I, I, mean, I, I probably, I put a, probably put it there, and like, like you know, that handicap's coming down this year, so I'm even more proud to tell people I go. Uh, don't worry, I got you guys. I got you guys in September, man. Don't worry. Oh, hey, we were, we were saying we need a we need a team group for the, the tournament. For the tournament, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll pay. We don't care. We'll win them. Yeah, I, I definitely won't win. I'm, I'm terrible at golf. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, that was, well, that was awesome. Uh, Coach Paul has some more rapid fire questions, but first we'll get a commercial break. So we'll be right back. This commercial break is brought to you by Sports Unlimited located in Surrey, BC. Sports Unlimited is your home for all things team and corporate apparel. They can be reached at 604-597-3255 or online at www.sportsu.ca. Sports U, the place to be. All right, welcome back, folks. It's been a minute. Uh, We are joined today by two awesome gentlemen. I have the pleasure of coaching them um, at the University of Windsor. Thomas Kennedy and Toy Simon. Gents, are you both still there? Sir. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, the first part of the uh, show there, we just asked <clears throat> ask these guys some rapid fire questions. So we'll just continue on that train before we get into the really nitty gritty of today's topic, which is again the prototypical Sudu sports athlete from, from a player's perspective. Um, so I'll start with you. Have you traveled a bunch? And if so, what's been your favorite trip or your best trip and why? Um, I haven't traveled much yet, um, but I, I say um, our trip, our team trip to um, Amsterdam um, 2017 was probably a great highlight of mine. Um, Who was that? Coach Oliver. Um, so that's the year I had transferred back um, from Missouri. Um, 
my first year. I, I unfortunately got injured that year and didn't uh, play the entire year. I tore my yeah. meniscus. I was about to say, I thought that'd be a bad memory for you. No, nah, because listen, there's, there's, there's great things came out of my ACL in uh, meniscus. True, injury, true, true. So, um, you know, every, everything, there's never a bad memory, is a lesson. But um, so that, that, um, that trip, unfortunately, I didn't play, which was a bummer, but um, it was just amazing. You know, the, again, I'm an outdoors person, just the, the flatness of the land and just the, the culture, the food. Um, I was telling my girlfriend, I, I want to go to Spain next. You know, that's, that's somewhere I want to go. Like, you know, just see the culture there as well. So that, that was a good trip of mine. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, we're supposed to the last two seasons as, a, as an academy here actually in Vancouver. We're supposed to have gone to Spain. Um, it hasn't worked out both times, so we're trying to also get to Spain next summer as well too. So we may see you there or bring you on as a as a coach for us while while we're over there. That would be amazing, man. That'd be great. TK, what about you? Um, I, I'm the opposite. I've traveled. I've traveled so much, and um, very fortunate to say that's all because of basketball. Um, all but one place has been kind of been because of basketball. I've been to Dublin, Ireland, and surrounding areas uh, five times in my life because my mom is born and raised in Dublin. Nice. nice. Um, now I should say that's my favorite trip because of um, you know it's my family, it's people I don't get to see a lot, so that that's up there for sure. But basketball is also taking me to the Bahamas, to France, to Italy. Uh, to Greece, and then I'd probably have to put Greece up there as number one simply because it was uh, the one opportunity in my life I got the chance to wear red and white, represent my country. So yes. we're, yep. we're in Horaki on Greece, just outside of Athens, a little island there, and it was a great experience, great experience. Yeah, I've heard some stories from that experience too. So. Oh, it was unreal. I mean, I wish we could have done a little bit better for our country, obviously. Uh, we've dropped a few games that we probably shouldn't know um but still like like t said like you get used to a little bit of a different culture and then being with team canada you know they take care of you in terms of accommodations and whatnot so we were yeah. living the high life for a little bit for sure. living living the dream I like yeah it. And, and it helps that you're literally coming right from paris france right before so you know you're, you're kind of you're kind of riding the high at that point you guys are spoiled i like it um, <clears throat> either you can take this one, uh, well, both of you, would you either start to, uh, we'll start with, uh, with T. If you were, if you were standing on a deserted island, uh, what are the three things that uh, you'd hope to have with you? Um, man, that's a tough one. Three things. Yeah. Well, I need my phone. You're on an island, but I don't have coverage. Like I just need a game or something. Anything. <laughs> <laughs> I just need anything. I need I need something, some entertainment of some any kind, you know. So All I right. so um I need my phone just to play, I don't know, anything. For need sure. Um oh man. Well I'm gonna need a ball, basketball. I like it, yes, sir. Um that's two. And then Man. It's uh, tough, right? A tough one, yeah. I wasn't really expecting that question, but um, yeah. So. I, I know I know what I know which third one you probably want. I already know the third one. I know the third one. TK third one's easy. What? what do you think that? And she's gonna be so mad at you that you didn't yeah, say Yeah, come on, man. You see oh, yeah? take a oh, girl yeah, with yeah, you? Yeah. Come on. <laughs> oh yeah, he says. Ah, shoot. <laughs> she, she you, hope, you better hope she's not listening to this. She's uh, in the she, I think she heard that. She oh, gonna, she's gonna be mad at you when we when this she hears this. <laughs> I thought the other third one too might be like that shirt you got during that. Uh, you know, what was it? What was it? Is that Christmas time? Oh, the shirt. The shirt of uh, Tiana's face on it. <laughs> hey, yes, that shirt. Hey, that's 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 for the doghouse when when I've been playing too much basketball, I gotta throw that on, you know. <laughs> <laughs> TK, what about you? Um, yeah, the, the first one's obviously a ball. Um, I'm, I'm not trying to get off this island, right? Like, I'm just hanging out. Well, you're stranded, so you can't, you're not going anywhere. Anytime. I know, I'm messing. Uh, first one's a ball. <laughs> um, next one is, um, you know, obviously. A uh, 
like a tablet that has every single season of The Office loaded onto it. All right. Okay. Uh, something, you know, take up some time. I love that show. I could rewatch it a million times and still not be tired of it. Um, and then probably my golf bag. Let's go. Let's be real here. I can, I could kill a lot of time. I could, get, I could get my short game really good if I'm stranded on an island. That's what you meant with sand, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh tk uh sweeter sweeter savory sweet no doubt okay what about you t sweet 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 oh you got the sweet tooth the good thing i know the bad uh my spot on the bus i always have candy back there at the end of the game yeah 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 but don't be asking me to get you guys dessert because that's not how it happens no no i bring my own don't worry <laughs> ask ask coach igor he always makes a trip to the back of the bus because he knows <laughs> <laughs> although if you guys remember indiana Remember Indiana, we had that all-you-can-eat buffet. Mm. You guys were killing it at the dessert spot. Of course. Mm -hmm. Nah, I see. I see now. I see. Okay, I see. I see. Um, guys, what's your favorite all-time basketball or basketball moment? You got one, T? I got think. Yeah, I, I think for me, um, so 2014, um, Kobe's last game. Um, I was, I remember it was, um, Golden State, I was flipping the channel. I was watching the Golden State game because that was a chance to, uh, get the 73 win season and then Kobe wasn't playing so well. And then, um, and then I remember, uh, and then going off and what's going, what the heck, uh, what? And then I turned it back on second half and that was, that was, that was amazing. Something like it was crazy, crazy. Yeah, for, for sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thomas? I think mine would be tough to narrow down. Um, I would go one of them, definitely, as I mentioned, like the moment uh, Dan Van Horn, who was my head coach of Team Canada, told me I made the team. Uh, that meant a lot. Like that was, you know, within the past couple of years, showed a lot of hard work paid off and whatnot. So time I was told I made Team Canada was definitely a big one and then in my uh, final year with Riverside Falcons I won a division three gold medal with a uh, with a bunch of guys who were just like my friends of mine who I played with my entire childhood and like that was kind of really sweet because in my first year ever playing with Riverside Falcons I won yeah. a division three gold medal yeah it's awesome so my, my first and final year playing for them I won division three gold medal so I'll, I'll always remember those ones yeah, no those are pretty high up there. <clears throat> I think uh, you know, just you know, before we go to the next question, my favorite coaching moment with you guys so far, and I'm sure we'll have more to come. But uh, TK was when you absolutely crowned. And who was it? Who was it? Was it? Uh, was it York? No, uh, it was a. There was a few. I mean, there was a few ones. Some of the ones. You JD, sorry, Shaq popped it back to you. You came down right middle, like right down the right down the lane. Yeah, the one was the the one was what the foul, the N one was the N one. Yeah, that's and water then literally like the replica of that dunk. Yeah, or so I, I brought it up myself was against Waterloo. Yeah, the yeah. N one was against Guelph. Yeah, mm -hmm. now those mm -hmm. those ones, and then you yeah. know, even when you played against Ryerson, you just went off on the what did you do, 35 and 20. Yeah, something that was insane. And then T, T uh, I would say T, T will remember this one. My uh, my favorite U Windsor moment. Actually, I have two games that are tied for the highest. Mm -hmm. um, the first one would be uh, Brock in my first year. Okay. T, did we go to double or one overtime? No, we went to one. One went overtime. to one, but we were down by seventeen mm -hmm. with four minutes left. Yeah. Like, and yeah. we like we were having a bad season in my first year. We should not have won that game against a very talented Brock team. Mm -hmm. Had uh, Cassie Ryan, who's that? Who's the shooting guy? T, you remember? They had um, what's his face? Um, oh man, it's two, two guys, who, tall kid, two guys yeah. who play pro right now. Like they were very, very good. Coached by uh, Kissy. Like they were. It should not have happened. And what brought us to win that game was it was the first time we had our modern day uh, party army. Uh, it's the, the the football team at the University of Windsor was in that <laughs> and, that day and they were going nuts. Like those guys. And yeah. ever since that game, they started coming back. They're our biggest supporters. Like big yeah. shout. Out. Shout out to the and, University uh, of Windsor football guys. Those are oh, awesome. Yeah. And then this past year, a uh, similar game against Lakehead. 
Um, yes, yes. We were down, made a comeback. Now, this is a game that we should have won, so thank God we won it. Um, but, you know, we had, like, uh, our vet of ours, uh, Chris Polinano, had a huge three at the end of the game. Yeah. Um, and we were down by 17 yeah. going the fourth quarter until I hit, you know, one of my four threes from the year. Uh, <laughs> to, uh, <laughs> to put us down 14 going to the four. So, yeah, you know, two games like that where you're kind of out of it and, you know, just claw back. Those are definitely yeah. you yeah, yeah. And memories. And T, like, one of my – two of my favorite moments with you was uh, I got to bring up Nick. Nipissing, you know, did you catch out? You caught 22 rebounds as a guard. That's insane. Like, that's just that's crazy. That's ridiculous. That's 22, 2K 22 numbers. 22 boards. Right? That's, mm-hmm. that's game mode, right? <laughs> and uh, the other one was, um, one of the other ones was Algoma. Dropped 40 point. points on them. Because let me set up the people that are listening to this. So we play, when you go to Algoma, you get to these northern schools, you play them back to back, right, guys? So you play the, we play the Friday, Saturday play the same team so it's a hard it's hard the next day especially to play the same team back to back so the friday night we lost that game we shouldn't have lost that game whatever reason we lost t did not say a single word to anybody for the rest of the night into the next day t was pissed t comes out and drops 10 threes 40 points Three points, not just that coach. We set a we set a school record to start that game. We set a school record because we scored like forty mm-hmm. points in the first quarter. <laughs> when we started the game, 24 24 nothing. Twenty four nothing. Finished the first quarter like twenty six to two. So we had twenty six <laughs> points in the first quarter. Ploy had twenty of them. Like I think insane. I remember we we left the starters on for like that entire first quarter. Oh yeah. I don't think I crossed half more than like a handful of times because really, I get a rebound. Outlet to Shaq or JD, one more pass to Toloy, bang, three ball. Bang. One more pass to Toloy, <laughs> bang, attack the rim. Like, yeah. we didn't have to get across because Toloy was just hitting that day. That was crazy. Yeah, it was unreal. And then the last one for the last few questions here, guys, and getting the rest of the topic of tonight, I'm sorry, today, is, uh, you know, TK, you mentioned about Lakehead. Um, and, and, and shout out to Chris Poyanato, living the graduate life. He uh, hit that big three. But prior to that, T, you hit that, you hit that, t- you hit that three. There was one, there's one in the wings, there's one in the corner. And you yeah. flexed up after. And I was like, yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, yeah. that was a big win for us as well, too. Mm-hmm. Um, guys, between both of you, who's, who's your favorite NBA team? No, I'll go for it. Because I think T actually has a team. I don't really have a team. Um, I've always, like, just had a player who I love watching. Like, when I was really young, I love watching Captain Canada. I love watching Steve Nash play. Yeah. Um, like, I watched, oof, I watched every game that guy played. I, as I said, I didn't grow until grade 10, so I was trying to be that little Canadian point guard like him. Um, and then once he – once he went to the Lakers, I was like, okay, I'm done with him. Um, <laughs> and then uh, – but when KD got into the league, and I know Tolo is going to agree with me on this one, I watch – I know people say, oh, it's bandwagon. I just like watching KD play, though. So, yeah, he's, you know, he's Brooklyn Nets cool. might not be my favorite team, but I just – if KD's on the screen, I like watching the way that guy plays. He's just too smooth, an unstoppable scorer. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. T, what about you? Well, um, for me, ever since Kobe left the league, um, I went to KD. Um, KD's my – one of the – my favorite players I enjoy watching. Um, he as well as Jaymon. Um, so tendency. So me, I like Katie's offense. So I, I would say I watch a lot of Brooklyn. Now, so I would say Brooklyn is my team ever since he left Golden State. But uh, I'll still watch Golden State because um, I like Jaymon. Just some of the defensive tendency. Because I kind of enjoy. Like, you know, as I got a little out of high school, I just started to understand. Like, if you want to play this game of basketball, you have to. Um, you know, you have to do both. So I, I like those those two guys because of what they bring to the game. For sure. And conversely, do you, do you, know, you guys have, both of you guys have a favorite NCAA team or not so much? I do have an NCAA team. I'm a huge, <laughs> uh, huge Michigan fan. Um, okay. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. simply because my dad, my dad was in Windsor. You're either a Michigan State or a Michigan fan, one or the other. And then you, you hate the other rival school and uh, – yeah. We're a Michigan family, so I've always loved watching them play. No matter what sport, I've been to the big house twice. Big house, yeah. I've, I've never been to watch a basketball game except for actually, actually, sorry, I did watch a tournament game that was held at um, 
uh, the Pistons, the, yeah, the yeah, Palace, yeah. the Palace. The they, they're playing the game. I'm sorry, they're uh, they their first games of the Palace. So yeah, just gonna play there. No, what about, about you, team? State? What do you say to me? No Ohio State. Did you just say, oh, oh, so that's a Michigan fan. Coach Ali, you hearing this? You talking about Ohio yeah. State to a Michigan fan? Did you said that word? Hey, <laughs> hey, Coach P, guess um, I remember we went we went on our Indiana trip with Coach Oliver and uh, Andrew had his Andrew wanted to be a clown and put a buy a Ohio State hat and JK did not let him come on the bus until he took that off. So this guy, everyone listening, JK is my dad. He's a he's a serious dude. <laughs> Tom Dad said no, he's not coming to bus until he takes that off. Yeah, yeah no, we can't mess with that. Yeah. But yeah. I don't have a team. I hope you have I hope you have mouthwash, man, so you can wash your mouth off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I don't have a team. You know, I kind of just watch um whoever. Yeah, where's Coach Ali at? Coach Ali, we have to we have to mediate this. These guys are about to start boxing each other. <laughs> In, inner beef within the team. <laughs> Uh, guys, do your favorite type of music and why? Mm. Um, I kind of listen to everything, um, including country. I listen, there was a summer, I think it was Tiana can I, I should tell you guys that, but I it was, um, last summer, I think I, I just, I just played, I was just playing around like when I was going, I went home for a trip and I just kind of played. I, I forgot who it was, I still have the album here on my phone, but um. Yeah, yeah, I just I was just horsing around. It was it was pretty cool. I put the window down and and I was just cruising. So you hear this, TK and Ali, Coach Ali? He likes he likes. Country. I can't even I can't even get I can't even get out of him for that to be honest. You, you're a country you're a country guy too. I'm not a country guy, but like 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 he said, I listen to everything. Like you know, in the locker room at the University of Windsor, I'd never have control of the Ox, rightfully so. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever the guys are playing, I'm listening to that. You know, I enjoy it. I'll give who, who, who controls the ox in the, in the team? Uh, JD Juice. Yeah, JD Juice. Oh, right? yeah. That sounds about right. Mostly, yeah, yeah. mostly Juice, to be honest. Yeah. 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 I, be- I believe it. I believe it. Uh, What's your- yeah. Go ahead. But like he's, I listen to everything. Like, because obviously I'm playing basketball, you know, it's always whatever those guys got on. But then if I'm out on my own or with my girl, it's, uh, you know, it's old rock. Uh, you know, she'll put on country, and I'll have to deal with that. But you know, she puts on a few songs. You know, I don't mind. I'll actually enjoy. So it's not that big of a deal. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah. What's your uh, <clears throat> both of you? What's your all-time favorite basketball movie? Um, mine is between He Got Game and uh, Love and Basketball. Oh, come to quickness. Okay. okay. Yeah, game of love and basketball, yeah. Mine's Glory Road, no doubt. Ooh, another good one. Another yep. good one. Well, gents, that's been the rapid fire questions that we have for you guys. We're going to get into the nitty gritty of, uh, of, of the topic when we come back on this back side of this commercial break. This has been a minute, and then we'll be right back. This podcast episode is brought to you by Form Basketball Academy, located in Vancouver, BC. Form Basketball Academy offers multifaceted programs, including one-on-one private training and film study with NCCP nationally certified coaches. To find out more information about this and other program or league opportunities, check them out at formbasketball.com. Form Basketball Academy. Become your best with us. All right, folks, welcome back to Been a Minute. Uh, we're joined today by uh, Thomas Kennedy and Tloy Simon, uh, captains of the University of Windsor men's basketball team. Gents, you still with us? Yeah. Awesome. Uh, it's been great to get to know more about you guys and listen to you guys, um, you know, just your story and everything in like that. But we want to get into the nitty gritty of, uh, of today's topic, which again is um, the prototypical youth sports athlete from a player's perspective. Um, so as we transition to that, I know that's Coach Ali's got a few questions for you with that. So uh, I'm just going to kick back and listen and enjoy and uh, take it away, Coach Ali. Yeah. So Hey guys, uh, we hear that our very own Purdue P is your university coach at uh, Windsor. 
So can you tell us a little bit about that, what it's like seeing him every day and being coached by him? If you guys want to take turns. So like who goes first? Yeah, T, you, you. Uh, you tell us about the uh, the on-court because I got something to add after. I just <laughs> big time to contribute for him. Yeah, so um, on-court, because, you know, Coach P is usually working with the guards. Um, a lot of time on the court when we uh, separated big, small. So I kind of, that's where, you know, I kind of see more of, you know, what, what he does because he obviously he's a basketball mind. But with him, it's like, you know, his attention to detail, you know, like he doesn't, you know, he holds you accountable. Um, he makes sure, you know, you're always honest to the game at all times. So the little details, like making cuts, you know, you, you can be very skilled, but, you know, he, he takes you back into, you know, the, the less is more he always says to me is like, you know, it just takes you back to the basics. Um, and then you can obviously um, um, shine with the rest of the things that you already know how to do. So with him, it's like my perspective with him and, and, and relations that we build is like, you know, like with him, it just doesn't matter how good you are or, or whatever skill you have. It's like he always holds you accountable to be your absolute best at all times. Sure. Yeah, I'll first, uh, first add for the like the on court. Um, as he said, he's big, he's small, so you know I don't really get to see too much of his skill training. But where I do get to see him on court is he's our uh, he's our offensive assistant coach, so he's in charge of you know modeling offense if we're changing it every week, you know. So you really see his basketball mind through like the breakdown of film, his ability to, to you know pick out other teams' weaknesses and select the sets that's going to get us the most success. Um, and then I'll add like the one thing that you said, the thing about seeing him every day, um, something like I try to role model and, uh, you know, you like replicate um, and keep myself a little bit more accountable. And I'm, I'm very impressed at how well he does it. It's like the best way to describe it is like not being too cool for school. Mm-hmm. You know, like he doesn't take himself too seriously. And like, that's, that's a big thing, especially you see, you know, a lot of people who can be too serious in the sport. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's kind of a relief, like when you're going in, with film with coach Chang and you stop for, you know, two minute conversation with coach mm-hmm. B, you know, like it's, it's lighthearted. You have a good time, but then at the same time we get, we step between the lines, you know, it's, then it's a different guy, you know, like he's ready to compete and you can trust he's going to be there. So those are two, that's one big thing off the court that I've always been very appreciative of is, you know, not taking himself too seriously, you know, and treats us all like adults and, uh, you know, is willing to joke around with us a little bit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Are you are you the guys that text them at like six thirty in the morning asking to go for a run? Me? No. Yeah. Or is that someone else on? No, that's not. That's not these guys. Not <laughs> these guys. These guys love their sleep, man. <laughs> I sleep. Of course. <laughs> um, what things do you guys think comprise the makeup of a youth sports athlete? Obviously, specifically the basketball. Um, to you go yeah you want me to go um so well so this is speaking to the high school kids yeah because our, our audience sorry yeah our audience is uh grassroots level kids youth boys girls some there's some parents listen to this so if if the youth want to become tk if they want to become toloi what do you think what comprises what makes up what do you make what do you think makes up a youth sports athlete um just hard work, um, discipline, um, holding yourself accountable, um, sacrifice, um, being coachable. I'm gonna obviously expand on those in a second. Um, what else? Character matters. Probably one of the greatest attributes you should have. Um, motor um and someone who doesn't have any excuses and is willing to do whatever it takes to win um so i'm gonna elaborate on that so nowadays you know um you know obviously um i do a lot of training so i can kind of see some of the perspective um see how kids hold themselves or, or you know whatever um so the hype doesn't it's not going to get the job done to go next level what i mean by that is you have to put in the work. Um, you got to get in the gym. You got to practice the right things. You can't just go over there and just shoot shots. 
and say I put in the work that day? What kind of shots are you taking? Um, you know, is, you got to be honest because at the end of the day, um, there's going to be someone out there who's doing um, more than what you're doing. So you got to be real. <laughs> um, just holding yourself accountable and making a sacrifice to say, okay, if you want to be a basketball player, you got to devote everything you have to becoming a basketball player. So again, I can go on forever about all those, but at the end of the day, just, just be real, um, work hard, um, take criticism and just be coachable because, you know, no, no, nobody, no coach is ever going to, you know, um, waste their time. doesn't matter how good you are, waste their time on the headache you bring to the program or whatever you do. So um, obviously I can span after, but I'm going to let Tom go. Yeah. I mean, it all, it all always sounds like cliches, you know, work hard and make a sacrifice. But at the end of the day, like those are the things that count. Um, and like, understand that like if you want to get to the next level you have to train and perform at the next level right so like every day that you're getting ready in high school you got to train like you're trying to be the university player right it's not good enough to beat the competition where you're with you want to be better than the next competition mm -hmm. so like the things that i think like really stand out in youth sport athletes um like we understand like we don't take the what people look at a lesser of opportunity staying at home. Like we don't take that for granted, you know, like we, we chose to be here yeah. um, and we're ready to perform at the highest level. Like it's what we do. And then adding on to that, just role, you know, I hear that a lot and I didn't really grasp that concept until like maybe my third year into university, but just cause you can do something doesn't necessarily mean that's what's best for the team. You know, I understand I can post, but, I'm a guard who can post up as well, but I understand I have a six, seven, a six, nine dominant big man over there who needs to be there. So again, sometimes you, you have to sacrifice um, sure. when it comes to next level, because again, like um, what is going to get us the win is ultimately what matters, not what you think matters. And that's what I've understood um, going into my last year um, of university is that, you know, you, you might be needed as a spot-up shooter. So you're going to have to excel on being a great spot-up shooter. And then if your role expands into putting the ball on the ground, then, then that's what your role is going to be. And again, you, you can't be a CEO. You got to be a, you can't be a custodian and expect to be a CEO. You got you to gotta do all the little things. I think Damian Lewis said that you got to do a lot, a lot of the little things and, 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 and get, you know, and, and get a, a, a new position. You got to, keep getting keep building and and, and build until things in a big way yeah exactly i'll add two words to the word uh role there like embrace your role mm -hmm. big thing right like not just understanding it but like whatever it is you got to accept it and embrace it so that when the opportunity comes maybe you can take on a bigger role right because if a coach or a teammate can't trust you with the role that you already have there's no chance they're gonna be trusting you to give you a new one exactly no yeah. doubt no doubt <clears throat> No doubt. The uh, no, it's it, it's it's so it's so key. And before Coach Ali touches on his next question for you guys, as we deep, dig deeper into this, one of the things that uh, you guys mentioned about coachability, we talked earlier really about accountability. And I think Thomas is going to know the story I'm going to tell here is, you know, the accountability goes both ways. The accountability is as coaches to players and players to coaches. So TK, where, you know, where in this, I can't remember which game it was, but I remember TK had, there was, a, there was something that happened in the court, whether it was a mistake or whatever it is, and he came up and I, I kind of cussed him out in the moment. Yeah. <laughs> and TK held me accountable. TK looked me in my eyes and said, coach, I don't need that right now. Yeah. Right? Yes, coach, sir. I get I made a mistake, but I don't need that right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? And I, as a, and it's to, especially as men, we are often, we're, we're, we tend to be a bit more stubborn. We tend to be more headstrong. If I was a headstrong person, I'd be like, you know, who are you talking to? I'm the coach of the player. No, mm -hmm. I didn't. TK, what did I say? You said you're right. You, you backed away for a second. You gave, you gave me an opportunity to make up for it, man. Um, and that, that was one thing that I just mentioned about you, coach. Like you, like you treated us like adults, right? So like I've, it's not in that, like I felt comfortable saying that to you, you know? 
So yeah, yeah. And you know, I later apologized to him. And you know, that's that's that coach player relationship, right? It's about understanding each other. But at the end of the day, it's about accountability. And Coach Chris also says, listen, if we as coaches show up and we're at practice and we're bullshit, call us out. Yeah. Right? It's the same thing as because we're calling you out as players. You got to call us out as coaches. And it's when we say, okay, you know what? I just don't have it today for whatever reason, or I just need a moment. But that's yeah. what it's, it's, it's all about, right? So yeah, I would sum that up as like, like how I like to think about that is um, like when you say like it's a team, like we're the, we're the Windsor men's basketball team. Like there's no different levels in that, right? Yeah. Like the Windsor mass, men's basketball team is compromised of everyone that's involved. So that goes from Coach Chang all the way to the end of our roster, right? Yeah. Like, and then our, our support staff, our training staff, like everyone's on the same level. So communication is completely, you know, there is actually no vertical communication because everyone's on the same level. Everyone talks about it. For sure. Yeah. Coach Ali. Yeah. Um, I know you guys mentioned this earlier, but uh, as youth sports athletes and captains of the winter team, what qualities do you have that youth sports coaches look for when recruiting athletes to their respective schools? So like uh, you guys mentioned coachability, uh, being coachable. Um, that's a big thing that, that we, 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 want, uh, we talk about at form, but is there anything else or adding to that question before? I was, I was scrolling on, on social media the other day, like a, probably a couple of weeks ago. I don't remember what coaches says. I want to say it was Nick Saban, but I could easily be wrong. I mean, he was talking about like his recruitment process and it wasn't even a specific trait or anything like that, but I think it sums up like how to be recruit in probably the best way possible. Um, and it was like simply, uh, maybe listeners, maybe you guys have heard, heard this one or saw this one. Um, it was uh, and or but. And every description of a player he gets, he looks for two different words. And or but. Right? Because when you're at a high level, when you're a coach, even in youth sports, all the players you're looking at are already the best player on their team, an all-city player, you know, can perform this well, this well, do all that. They're, they're this but they don't perform well in school, right? But they're, they're an energy sucker in the locker room, right? Those are negative. So but's always a negative. But then you get a guy who, you know, all city player, great, uh, like best player on his team, you know, performs this part of the game well, that part of the game well, and he's an energy giver and he's our team camp captain, true leader, and he's great in the community. So that like the and and but speech that I heard the other day, like that really set in for me in terms of like, look at yourself and mm -hmm. try to figure out if you're an and or a but. Yeah. But really, really look at yourself and see if you're taken away from the team outside of basketball, right? Because at some point, if you're being considered for this level, you're good enough skill-wise. What else do you bring to the table? For sure. Uh, uh, Toloi, you have anything? Yeah, that's 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 a deep one still. But um, yeah, I would, I would just add on to you, you got to be able to, you know, like a lot of the guys, if you don't comprehend what Tom just said, but pretty much you have to be giving something like, you know, you have to be great at something. So not everyone's a scorer at next level, you know, it's going to be you. What can you do if you're not scoring? Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, what can you do? Like, can you defend? Can you rebound? Can you, you know, deflection, whatever, like you got to be able to do something that adds value to you. You know what I mean? And again, if you want to be a great youth sport player, you just you just have to be unique. And and that's pretty much it. I, I know from for me, I just want to make it as hard as possible for a coach to not take me off. And if I'm not scoring, I already know my value. I'm gonna defend the heck out of the ball. And if I'm not defending, I'm gonna rebound the heck out of the ball. So then it's gonna make coach job more difficult to take me off the court. And you gotta ask yourself, what can you bring that will make coach's life harder? Um, in a good way, obviously, um, that adds value to, to who you are as a player. And that's, that's ultimately, ultimately all will make you the best player. And that's all that matters. Sure, those are good answers. Um, coach Paul, you have the last question. Yeah, before I get to the last question, guys, I just want to, uh, it's not a question that we had prepped for you guys, or we had uh, talked about really, but, you know, <clears throat> as an as an academy here in Vancouver, you, I, I, both of you, 
you, I loved your answers. Um, and TK, you talked about the end and but, you know, mm -hmm. and both of you have gone on, obviously are playing high level. Both of you have left your house, your your home community and you're playing, whether, well, you know, T, you went down to Missouri, TK, you went to Southwest and so on and so forth. What would you say to the, you know, the Brassus level players who, you know, one of the things that we, we, we tend to get a lot in our Instagram, especially in our DM. So coach George deals a lot with our social media is, Oh, you guys are too far. Oh, you guys are too far. And really you might have to maybe drive an hour. You might have to take transit. You mentioned about Ann and button, but both of you answered this, you know, what would you say to those, to those players who are listening to this call, who, who are, who are going to maybe use distance as a crutch. As a, as a crutch to get to workouts. <laughs> yeah so like there's like oh it's too far or i can't kind of practice or you're you know i can't come all the way out there i can't i can't what, 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 would, what would you say but they're serious but they're trying to get to where you guys are at as you sports athletes <laughs> um i i always feel bad saying it because i was always in a position you know where where my dad was a head coach so i never really had that struggle um but at the end of the day, like the only way I can describe it is your bullshit, right? Like if you want to get there, there's a way, right? You, you, you'll find a way to get there. If you want to get to the next level, it means training with the best players in your community, the best coaches in your community, which of everything I know, that's for BC, that's with form basketball, right? So if you want to get with coach P and him take you to the next level, you got to get there. Find a way, like you said. There's a lot of ways around a car ride. All right, you can figure it out. T. Yeah, like again, like different generation, but if an hour away, if you got a bus, that's not a lot to play with the best in the city, or to be coached by someone who's gonna help you get to that next level. So, I would like you said, Tom. Like, there's a way, and this. If you're going to carry those excuses, if you're a parent and you're giving those your child those sort of excuses now, I think that's just going to um, be instilled in them and that's going to, it's going to carry on. And then they're going to be making excuses when they're living off campus and get to university about a 6 a.m. workout. So it's, it's all about what you want and what your why is. And Coach, these uh, these guys who use this as a crutch, they, they end the conversation at... Um... Like I can't make it because of a car ride or because of that. Yeah, it's too far. Okay, so uh, I would say even this, you know, I don't know the situation of the players asking or people in that. Don't end the conversation at it's too far. <laughs> add a sentence to that text. Add a sentence to that phone call. Coach, it's too far. You know, I can't make it. I got to stay at home, watch the brother, watch the mm -hmm. sister, whatever you got to do. What are we working on at practice tonight? Yeah, yeah. Like what are the skills being worked on? let me go do it in my garage. Let me go do it at the local park somewhere I can get to in five minutes. Mm -hmm. You're like, don't end the conversation at, I can't do it. Mm -hmm. All right. Like find a way, right? Like how can I do it rather than I can't do it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Which leads us to the last question. And then, you know, and then coach Ali will um, say his thanks to you guys. Um, this has been awesome. They say, I've, I've, I've truly enjoyed this. Um, but, you know, like I mentioned, our audiences, young boys and young girls, um, some parents listen to this, and I'll use some coaches, but, you know, our target audience is, is, is the grassroots level players. Um, from the both of you, if there's pieces or, you know, one to two, maybe three things of advice that you would give to those listening about achieving their goals, both academically and uh, basketball wise and how they can become the next Tuloy and how they can become the next Thomas. What, what would you, what would you, what would you say to them? Do you want me to go? Yeah, go ahead. Man. Um, like you said there, coach, uh, the goals, you, you got to define those goals, like specifically verbalize, write out and define those goals. Cause like if in your head, you know what, what you want out of it, you're going to make the right decision every time to achieve that. Personally, I don't want to just play professional basketball. I want to retire from basketball. So I understand the sacrifice of, you know, not hanging out with a friend or doing this or staying that extra hour in the gym is going to give me that opportunity. 
right? So you have to define that goal. If I just want to be a youth sport player, every minute you put in the gym, now maybe you're a starter. Now maybe you're a, an, like an all-star, right? That goal has to be defined so that when you're making a decision on whether to work out or not, you'll always lean towards the workout side because you know what you want at the end of the day. That's, that's, that's the biggest thing to me, just defining your goal and understanding how you can get there is by putting it in the work. Sure. Yeah, that's a good one, man. I would just say, like, even from the classroom, like, if you you know basketball is, you know, is, is just, you know, an outlet that's going to help you, you know, um, not necessarily be a professional basketball player, but just to just be involved in a team setting, I would just say, like, just um, use it to your ability, like, be, like, be the best you can in the classroom. So, again, like, for me, I've always wanted to be a teacher. So I, I know I can't be a teacher playing basketball all day. I got to balance and I know I want to play professional. So I got to make sure I spend time on the court as well as time in the classroom. And I know that's my end goal. And you got you to gotta do whatever it takes to do both. And then the rest, like hanging out with friends and stuff, you can't hang out with your friends for the rest of your life. So you got to take care of what you need to take care of first and then yeah the rest will, you know, um, take care of themselves. So again, just work as hard as you can on both avenues. If, I tell my brothers all the time, like, if you're not good in the classroom, you can't play basketball. And if you're not good in basketball, you, you know what I mean? Like you can't go anywhere. So again, you got to work, like I keep saying, just, just do your best in all aspects. So then, you know, you give yourself a chance. If like, like when I, when I say define your goals, if you ask, if you take the OUA first team or even the all Canadians of 2019, 2020, and you ask them, what's your goal? You're not, you're going to get an answer within five seconds. Mm -hmm. They're not going to have to think about it. It's those, it's those people that you ask, Hey, what's your goal? And they're like, Oh, I, I you know, I want to do that. I don't, I don't know. Um, I'm hoping like people who say I'm hoping they're not truly motivated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm hoping I do that. Right. If you if you have a goal in mind and you want to achieve it, it's definitive. Define it for yourself, and then every time someone asks, that you know what you're working towards. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, no truer words said by both of you gentlemen. I mean, you're both academic all Canadians. Which, yeah. for those that don't know, um, actually, you know what? Could one of you do, can maybe TK just for the for the youth that maybe don't know what an academic all Canadian is? Can you tell them what the criteria is? Yeah. So I'll first say actually at what T's saying, so uh, being really good in a classroom is obviously important no matter what you're considering. Like you gotta be, to be successful in life, you have to be uh, good in a classroom first. Uh, to play in the state side, you have to be good in the classroom. To play in Canada, you have to be especially good in the classroom mm -hmm. because if you wanna get a Canadian scholarship to play basketball in Canada, coming out of high school, you have to have a 70 average or higher. And then to keep that scholarship, you have to have a 70 average or high every single year of university. Mm -hmm. And now what coaches asked me to define is to be an academic all Canadian, you have to obviously be playing a varsity sport and have an 80 average or higher. Mm -hmm. So me and Taloy, you know, we put our head down on our books, work hard. And we've actually, this year, this past year, we've had, I think six or eight, I think we doubled our number of academic all Canadians this year. Yeah. Um, of guys who you know who are taking it more seriously. They understand that I want to play at this level and I want to be rewarded for financially for playing at this level. So let me do well academically. And when you get 80 or above, 80 average or higher, you get the opportunity to be named an academic all Canadian and receive a athletic scholarship the following year. Exactly. No, no doubt. Well, thanks gentlemen. I know that uh, Coach Ali has a few words, then uh, he'll uh, send, you guys, send you guys on your way. So Coach Ali, take it away. Yeah, well, that wraps up our time with our two amazing guests. Like uh, Coach Paul said, it was really awesome having you guys on. Um, again, that's Thomas Kennedy and Taloy Simon, the co-captains of the U Windsor men's basketball team. I know Coach Paul and I had a great time, and I hope you guys did as well. Yeah, I really and enjoyed it. Thanks for having us on. Thank you. Yeah, and on behalf of Form Basketball Academy, we like to thank you for coming on to our show. No doubt. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you, gentlemen. Thank you. We'll see you guys soon. Yes, thank you.
All right, folks, this has been a minute. Uh, we'll go to a quick commercial break and we'll be right back. This commercial break is brought to you by Sports Unlimited, located in Surrey, BC. Sports Unlimited is your home for all things team and corporate apparel. They can be reached at 604 597 3255 or online at www.sportsu.ca. Sports U, the place to be. All right, everyone, welcome back to uh, Been a Minute. Uh, we just said goodbye to Thomas Kennedy and to Lloyd Simon out of the University of Windsor. Uh, men's basketball team, co-captains of the team as well, too. Amazing young men. Um, Coach Ollie, uh, tell, I mean, I get to see them every day. So yeah. I, I'm a bit, obviously, I'm biased, but also appreciative of them as captains as, as a, and of, of young men. Um, you just, you know, you don't know them too well, but please, for the audience and for a debrief, tell us your thoughts and what you what you took away from from the time with them. Yeah, um, well, they seem like, first off, I'd like to say they seem like really great guys. Um, they have a lot of experiences like basketball wise and because they've been playing since they were little and um, like like Thomas said, he's been all around the world because of basketball, and um, that's something that a lot of like grassroots, I guess, a lot of grassroots players hope to do one day. And I guess uh, Taloy and Thomas are they're they're, they're going to be big like inspirations to the our audience, grassroots level people. Yeah, no, for sure, and you know. You know, if 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 travel is what you want to do, like I've traveled around for for work, but also for for basketball, and it's it's amazing, guys. And the the friendships that you 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 make with your teammates, you know, I'm still friends with a lot of my teammates from when I played provincial and played at the university, and even going to school and all that stuff. It's it's a lot of them is a lifetime, you know, it's a lifetime lifelong friend or friendship, and. Uh, you know, I know for for Toloy and 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 TK there, they'll sit back when they're 50, 60 years old and maybe enjoy an adult bevy and just talk about their times together and talk about where basketball's taking them after their time at the at the university level. Um, sure. Yeah, it's great. And you know, once again, thanks to the both of them for for coming on our show. And you know, thank you, Coach Ali, for you know taking the mantle up and pretty much doing the show by yourself um with, uh, with coach and non not being able to be on today um possession 24 uh the, the last several weeks we've been we've been talking about our dna as a program so we had our program dna we talked about our offensive dna we talked about our defensive dna uh we want to pivot and we want to we want to talk about uh something that's dear to me obviously and dear to you coach ollie um, something that is in, that's uh, we feel that's important. Um, we have our BC Hoops Summit tournament coming up, presented by Under Armour up at uh, UBC, and yes, um, you know the part of that tournament is is the umbrella. The umbrella name of that is the Canada Hoops Summit. Uh, so we've partnered with you know obviously Form and then Triumph out of Winnipeg. Um, and Phillips Academy, Phillips Battle Academy in Toronto to create this national series. Um, and, you know, there's more about that to come. If you, if you want to read more about that, check us up on our socials. Um, you can find us on Instagram at f.o.r.m.basketball. Um, we're also on Twitter at Forum Basketball. But, you know, if you go to our Instagram page, it, it gives you a bit of a, a quick snippet about uh, not only the BC Hoop Summit, but also the Ken Hoop Summit. Uh, but Coach Ali, why do you why do you feel that Canadian players prefer to go stateside uh, than stay in their own quote unquote backyards other than stay at home? Um, I I feel like there's this common stereotype that like American hoops is more competitive and more harder to play in than Canadian basketball, um, and I I feel like that's not true. Just because of that stereotype, more Canadian players are more attracted to go to the states. And 
I guess in a way there there are more eyes um like the scouts uh like the agencies they're, they're more uh attracted towards like NCAA D1 D2 rather than U sports but Canada does have a lot of like talent and and you've seen like um uh, what was it? Our U19 team, like a couple years ago, we beat the American team mm-hmm. with the uh, RJ Barrett on and uh, Grant Shepard. Yeah. Like we, we, we have talent. It's just the, the common stereotype that, you know, Americans are more athletic, are more competitive than Canadians. That's yeah. probably why. And I mean, we'll be honest, like they, you know, I, I, we're not we're not hating on the NCAA. I, I mean, I got recruited to go to the NCAA. I you know ultimately didn't end up going, but and I played I played down in the states. I've you know I'm sure you have as well too. And we're not we're not trying to take anything away from the NCAA game. We're not trying yeah. to take anything away from the American game. Um, I think what we're trying to really highlight to the to the grassroots level players is that you know staying in your own backyard is just as good. U sports is just as good. It's just as competitive. You know, okay, I maybe don't have either the amount of money that gets pumped in like the like the NCAA does, but it's it's competitive. You 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 know, we we talked in the, earlier in the show. We had Floyd and and Thomas, and we have various other guests lined up who are playing or who have played this game through you sports. Um, staying in your own in your own backyard also is also more affordable for your family, but it's also it enables your family to be able to watch you, you know, and one thing yeah, that local. Thomas, yeah, so you're local. One thing that Thomas didn't touch on, you know, and in, in his time with us is that, so his, his dad is, is JK, right? And mm-hmm. JK comes to every one of our games, road or home. JK's in every game. Yeah. Even in the States, we went down, we went into the States, we're in Indiana, JK was there. You know what I mean? JK is traveling. And sometimes he's on the bus with us. A lot of times he's just driving himself, using his own money, his own dime, right? And, you know, would that be possible if Thomas was playing down in Texas or Florida or California? Probably not, right? Probably. Yeah. So it affords it, it, it affords the, your parents and your family that opportunity to be able to watch. I know that when we go and play Toronto, in Toronto or the GTA or even in Kitchener, a lot of the guys love it because they're family. A lot of the guys are from the GTA, from Toronto, from the Kitchener W, K, the KW area. So their families are able to come and watch those games as well too. And you know, it's so it's just it's just it's just food for thought, guys. We're not we're not experts. We're not trying to push you either way or other. We're just saying, hey, your backyard is your option as well too. Don't just uh, focus in on America. Um, second question for you, coach, before we finish out the show, is. Uh, just we're curious because we're we're having our tournament and what do you feel is the ideal tournament format and the amount of teams? Um, so your options are 8, 12, 16, 24, and stable A, 64. Yeah. Should I also add like round robin, elimination, stuff like that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anything. So uh, I'm not sure what the actual term is called, but not the... Not single, it's like in the single elimination format, but the, the bracket, the bracket. But yeah. I feel like we should, uh, I feel like the ideal tournament format for the bracket is, um, I'd say eight teams to 16 teams. 16, so okay. I'd go yeah. with 16 because, uh, well, I'd go with 16 if you have two gyms, like two, two courts. Yeah. But uh, eight, if you only have one court, okay. it's like the perfect amount because, you know, there's like everyone's guaranteed three games, no matter what you place, win or lose. Yep. Um, and twelve is kind of unfair because uh, four teams get a bypass in the first round, so eight teams have to battle it out, and then four four teams get to go straight to the first round. Yeah, and you, I mean you can do it. You can also do it where you know, especially with the twelve team tournament, they also sometimes have a you can do the back door. If you lose, but then you win, 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 you get the back door into the championship side again. You right. Know? So yeah, no, I mean, it's just, it's just curious. I mean, for us, we're, we're, we're doing round robin for our tournament, and then we're doing, uh, then we're doing round robin to playoffs, and then to the the consolation, third place, and championship side of things because uh, we feel, you know, and Coach Ali, you know, is part of the the, the leadership group for our coaching staff. You know, we feel that's the ultimate way that uh, 
you know, the grassroots level players should be playing. And uh, it, it makes it competitive. It makes it, uh, it makes it fun, but also it keeps the integrity of the game. And uh, that's one of the pillars that we have as a, as a program. Uh, so once again, our tournament will be uh, June 25th to 27th. Um, should there should there be any sort of change for that, the alternative the alternate date for that would be July um, 2nd to 4th. Um, Coach Ali, thanks for you did yeoman's work for for taking the lead and running the show today and you know making it a smooth transition even without uh, Coach Coach Anand. Um, yeah, no worries. It, it was great. So once again, we had uh, Thomas Kennedy and Lloyd Simon, uh, co-captains of the University of Windsor uh, men's basketball team. Uh, that's it for me. Uh, Coach Ali, uh, send us home. All right. Well, that's it for us this episode. Um, we hope you enjoyed our, uh, our uh, this, well, listening to us. And uh, stay tuned for more to come. Well, see ya. Peace.